Things are really coming together here in Season 3 of the Everton Takeover Rebuild. We might be out of both domestic cup competitions, but we're only five points away from a European place in the Premier League. And we currently hold a 5-2 aggregate lead over Manchester United after absolutely demolishing them in the first leg at Old Trafford. We'll be facing Manchester United again here in today's episode, but you'll just be seeing highlights of the return leg at Goodison Park. Today's featured game will be our opening game of the episode against Brighton and Hove Albion, also at Goodison Park, before we travel down to Vicarage Road to take on Watford. Brian Potter is, of course, taking on a former club in Brighton. However, we are three seasons deep into this career mode, and of course, he had a stint at Chelsea in between it is always good to get one over on a former team though and three points in this game would go a long way to our continued search for european football again next season that's why graham potter has gone with a strong 11 for this game though arguably not his strongest the captain jordan pickford starts in goal and it's a slightly new look back five with nathan patterson kevin danzo arno armand hodgich keeping their places but Ben Godfrey and James Justin coming into the side. Anton Stack and Lewis Ferguson start in midfield. And it is the strongest front three at the very least. With Alan San Maximan and Asan Diaw supporting Matthias Cunha up front. And it won't only be Graham Potter facing his former club today. As Joachim Anderson starts at centre-back for Brighton. Alongside Igor, Pascal Gross and Ian Matson start at right and left back. Verbruggen stands behind them. Budawi and Billy Gilmore in centre midfield. Buenanote, Shaparenko and Katara Matoma. The front three for Brighton behind Jao Pedro who leads the line. We are jumping straight into a featured game today. So without further ado, let's head over to Goodison Park and see if we can put three more points on the board. So we are up in the commentary booth at Goodison Park once more for an important Premier League fixture by most standards. However, kind of feels like the Premier League, like the domestic cup competitions, have kind of fallen by the wayside in terms of priority with our... Really, really good run that we've been having in the Europa League. We qualified top of the group. Kind of walked the group, to be honest. It wasn't a, a particular challenge for us. Good interception by Anno Ahmed Hodzic. And we breezed past Manchester United in the first leg of the knockout stages. And it's been good save. Jordan Pickford well held. It's been a couple of days since I recorded that episode, but I'm still kind of buzzing off that win, to be honest, especially considering that we were actually down in the game. We took the lead early, but Manchester United came back, took the lead, made it 2-1. Lewis Ferguson could say Verbruggen. So to come back from 2-1 down at Old Trafford and win 5-2, just a historic night for the football club one of the best games in the series so far without doubt Asan Diaw Mateus Cunha at the back post can he find him not quite headed away by the Brighton man what a save there Bruggen as Lewis Ferguson gets there for the rebound there's Anton Stack there's Asan Diaw again left foot strike this time across goal and wide positive signs early here at Goodison Park though Billy Gilmore almost got the block in there, Bruggen was motionless, but the shot dragged, unfortunately, just wide by Asan Diaw. We do need to turn it up a little bit more in the Premier League if we are going to secure European football next season. Obviously, I'd love to just go on and win the Europa League, and then we're guaranteed not only European football, but Champions League football at that, of course. What a challenge, Lewis Ferguson. However, winning the Europa League is obviously incredibly tough. 
And we can't really... No. Is that another handball? Harsh. Asan Diaw was about to strike again there. We obviously can't just rely on winning the Europa League as our way into Europe. So we need to really turn things on in the final two months or so in the Premier League to try and finish at least in fifth position and guarantee ourselves European football next year regardless of what happens in the Europa League. And it's been a really nice start here in this game. Bit of a loose pass by Alan San Maximan. He does collect the ball once more. Tries to find Asan Diaw towards the back post. What a game he had against Manchester United, by the way. Three goals. The hat-trick hero really led us, spurred us on to victory. Alan San Maximan. Kevin Danzo in there. Can't quite win their header. Anton Stack finds San Maximan once more. Can he beat his man? Not quite. There's Asan Diaw again. Anton Stack strikes from range, immediately blocked by Brighton, and they come away through João Pedro. On the left-hand side, Nathan Patterson can't quite intercept, but Matoma quickly dispossessed by Lewis Ferguson, and the referee says illegally so. João Pedro beats Ben Godfrey. Beats Kevin Danzo. And the shot fortunately pretty much straight at Jordan Pickford. But Brighton getting their first real taste. And their first real sight of goal. 15 minutes into the game. We've kept them pretty well corralled up until now. Matoma always so dangerous. Especially when he cuts in off that left hand side. Onto his right foot. Well worked again to Matoma, who's found himself in a very central position. And Alan San Maximan can come away on this left-hand side. We'll just retain possession. Brighton did well just to delay that quick counter-attack. And we'll just keep hold of the ball slightly. Brighton, of course, are going to know exactly what Graham Potter's all about. As how is that not a handball then? Thought I saw a handball in there as the Brighton defender tried to bring it down in the same way that Mateus Cunha did earlier. Oh, Alan San Maximan steals it away. Wins a throw in high up the pitch. He's been a really good addition to the side as well. San Maximan has been so impressive since he joined the club. Really making a difference on that left hand side. Asan Diaw in behind. Can he cut onto his left foot? Bit of a loose touch. Beats his man though, gets a cross in. Verbruggen claims. Does well to hold on to it in a dangerous area, Verbruggen. Any kind of parry away and Mateus Cunha was lurking. Sam Maximan as well had made a run into the box. And he finds Anton Stack now. James Justin on in place of Maxim de Kuyper, but he almost finds Lewis Ferguson at the back post. Usually we accept that we're not going to have those kinds of crosses when we play James Justin at left back. Of course, we rely on those kinds of crosses when we play Maxim de Kuyper. But James Justin doesn't have that same kind of playmaking ability. But he almost put it right on the money there, dropping it onto really either the toe or the head of Lewis Ferguson. But cleared away well by the Brighton man before Ferguson could get to it. Really good challenge, Anton Stack. Sam Maximan. Can he find Matthias Cunha? It's going to be Nathan Patterson. Alan Sam Maximan, 1 0 Everton. What a ball in. What a finish. And it has been coming, it has to be said. We've not been dominant exactly in the opening 25 minutes, but we've had the better of the game by far. And Sam Maximan just peeled away from his marker there. Kind of feigned a run towards the near post and then just peeled away towards the back. Nathan Patterson from the opposite side of the field to James Justin. Did manage to put it right on the money. Sam Maximan with the volley finish made no mistake. Very little Verbruggen could have done about that from such close range. And Sam Maximan continues to make his impact early on in his Everton career 
And it is a, a fairly early 1-0 lead here at Goodison Park. It's just the start we needed to the game, really. Not just the goal, but the way that we've been playing. We look comfortable in possession. We look dangerous going forward. And it looks like we're going to be able to handle really whatever Brighton have got to throw at us. That's been the case so far. Anton Stack, bit of a loose touch, can't wriggle away from the Brighton midfield. The starting lineup for Brighton is not great, to be honest. Brighton fans probably should be pretty disappointed with the way their team has developed over these three seasons of this particular save. They haven't really added anyone of any significant note. They've added Joachim Anderson, who starts at the back for them today. Of course, spent a season and a half at Goodison Park that was marred by injury and underwhelming form. Underwhelming form, probably not unconnected to his injury. Oh, that's a poor pass, Arno Ahmed Hodgic. Good save, Jordan Pickford. But Brighton really haven't added anybody of note. And their recruitment seems to have been fairly one-dimensional. I did select Brighton starting 11 for this game. I like to do that on occasion. Lewis Ferguson with a cross in this time. Anton Stack can't quite win it. CPU don't always make the best decisions when picking their starting 11. So if I think that's the case, I'll, I'll go in and manually pick the strongest starting 11 for Brighton. That's what I did today. So I got to see their entire team. Zalan Samaxaman wins the ball back. Gives it away immediately. No foul in there, ref. And Brighton just had so many centre midfielders. They don't have a true right back on the team. I had to start Pascal Gross at right back because he was he was the best option. It was Pascal Gross or somebody like Lewis Dunk or Adam Webster who were just far too slow to play at right back, really. And they had very limited options up front. We've seen them field Angelus Pavlidis at various times in this particular save. But he's obviously moved on because he wasn't available. The base, Kunya. Wriggles away from two Brighton men. Can he now find an Everton shirt? No, he can't. Relinquishes possession in the Brighton box. And Ansa Maximan wins it back, though. Also can't find an Everton shirt. And they also had very few wingers, Brighton. And so I, I think they have five, at least four, centre midfielders on their bench. As well as three starting here today. And there are a couple that I left out of the squad completely. The squad just seemed to be made up entirely of like 77 rated centre midfielders. What a save that is. That's Andy Al with a shot across goal. Looking to get on the score sheet again. Really, really good save by Ver Bruggen. He's been excellent as well each time we've played Brighton. Keep meaning to uh, change his gloves, although I'm not even sure that's a possibility. I've only ever changed gloves and boots and things like that for my team. I'm not sure whether you can scroll across and do that for CPU teams. Maybe I'll have a look at that after the game. But we are approaching half-time with a one-goal lead. I would like to double that at some point. Early in the second half, potentially at this stage. Oh, I thought Cunha was going to be able to collect that. It looked like the Brighton man had passed it straight to our striker. Alan Sam Max, a man pressing high, though. Can't quite win it back, but Anton Stack can. Sam Max, a man. Finds Lewis Ferguson. Bury it. No! I just tapped B instead of powering up a real shot. I panicked. I panicked. And Lewis Ferguson has just ended up passing it wide. I was caught in two minds there about whether to try a finesse shot, and that's what did it. My thumb and fingers were kind of poised, and I decided initially not to, and then last minute I changed my mind and thought maybe I will do a finesse shot. So I backed off B, but I'd already tapped it, and harmlessly wide. That was a real opportunity to double our lead before half time. We don't end up taking it, but... A 1-0 victory is still a victory. 
We'll try and make sure of that victory in the second half by grabbing another goal or two, but I would be more than fine if this was a scoreline at the end of the game. So back out for the second half at Goodison Park. Looking to get off to the same kind of start that we did in the first, and that's not it. That's a loose pass from our centre-back. Looking for Anton Stack. But immediately we see possession to Brighton, who through Matoma are immediately away on this left-hand side. Lewis Ferguson can't win it back. Anton Stack drives Brighton back, but cannot obtain possession either. Nicely worked from Brighton as they work it infield now to Billy Gilmore, eventually back to Matoma, who beats Nathan Patson again. And eventually just gives the ball straight to Jordan Pickford. And if we can find Sam Maximan on this left-hand side, maybe we can hit Brighton on the break. Now nah, they've got too many defenders back for that. We'll just keep possession. They don't commit quite as many players forward as some other teams, Brighton. But Nathan Patterson, along with that Sandy Al, could be away on the right-hand side now instead. Nobody really in the box to aim for. Dial just cuts inside. Finds Anton Stack. Sam Maximan hits it first time. And it was a good strike. There, Bruggen dives away to his right-hand side to parry it away, though. But positive signs again here in the second. Don't have Scott McTominay on the pitch. He's been such a good target from corners this season. Ben Godfrey collects. Is Ben Godfrey going to cross it in? Yes, he is. Straight to Verbruggen. Probably not the best idea from Ben Godfrey. Potentially could have held on to it to find somebody a little bit more suited to that particular task. Shaparenko for Brighton. James Justin there to meet him. And nicely worked by Brighton, but we are pinning the back. In their own half for now. Which. Oh, Matthias Cunha did manage to steal it away that time. Couldn't hold on to possession, though. Good challenge, Lewis Ferguson. Into the feet of Matthias Cunha. Back to Asan Diaw. Whose touch just takes it into the stride of the Brighton man. But we are winning the ball back from Brighton. Quickly and frequently. In this game. Matthias Cunha. You're drifting away from where I want you. Anton Stack can't win it back. It was Ferguson in midfield. Has had a, a kind of underwhelming season to be honest. We brought in Scott McTominay with the intention of him just being a little bit of depth in midfield. But he's ended up probably being one of our two best options. At centre midfield alongside Anton Stack. Thought Lewis Ferguson was going to provide a, a slightly different dimension. What a challenge that is. What a challenge, Ben Godfrey. No help for James Justin, though, really. Sam Maximan makes a run up ahead of him, but that option taken away by the Brighton defender. Anton Stack once more cuts inside. Can he get a shot away from range? Yes, he can. It's blocked again by Brighton, though. They've done well defending the edge of their own penalty area, Brighton. We've had a couple of opportunities to another really good sliding challenge. This time by James Justin. A change or two for Brighton. Murder and Marquez, two of those centre midfielders to come on. I think Graham Potter's going to make a change here as well. So two changes on the hour mark also for Graham Potter. Matthias Cunha to make way for Gerard de la Feu. And Scott McTominay replacing Lewis Ferguson. Didn't find a place in the starting lineup today, but he's been an influential player for us this season. And as we said earlier, he has been an excellent target from set pieces. So another man to aim for if we do manage to grab another corner or free kick in a dangerous area. Brighton have Leicester next. We have Manchester United in the second leg of the round of 16 in the Europa League up next. And then we'll be rounding things out today with the final match against Watford again in the Premier League. So a real opportunity to put some points in the, on the board in the Premier League in today's episode. If we can hold on to these three points, I think Watford really are a team we should be beating. So six points in the Premier League and 
progression to the next round of the Europa League very much a possibility here in today's episode and that would be a more than successful episode I would say by anyone's standards really Rowan for Brighton in a dangerous area though Jao Pedro Anton Stack forces it to a central area and Brighton continue to work it across the field and that's so well worked Nathan Patterson just really hasn't been on his on his toes today defensively nicely worked by Brighton we're really going to have to try and work this clear Jordan Pickford makes another good save another save that he should be making I would say but he does maintain that one goal lead for us with another good parry away gets it to safety as well rather than back into the penalty area is that Igor in such an advanced position I think it is and we force it backwards eventually to Matoma thank god free is beaten Kevin Danzo comes across and makes a really good block and he has to head clear Jordan Pickford there as well but eventually we do get it into the feet of Asan Diaw who can bring it away on this right hand side beats Igor inside finds Mateus Cunha nope that's Gerard De Lefeu now do not go out of play ah that was obviously intended for Nathan Patterson I'm not sure why Scott McTominay thought it was for him as Billy Gilmore makes way for yet another of these mid-70s rated Brighton midfielders De Lefeu tracking back same goes for Asan Diaw and he does win the ball back and that's got to be our free kick then ref there's no advantage there I saw the advantage pop up there's no advantage there if you're playing advantage to us you have to bring that back for a free kick and it was our free kick because it was a it was a hand ball by Brighton I'm not sure why that wasn't pulled back by the referee we got an advantage for a split second and it was barely even an advantage because all we could do was lob the ball forward and lose a header. Oh, De La Faye almost gets in. Patson wins the header. Can't knock it down to McTominay though. It's been a a really tough 15 minutes or so for us. It's been sloppy in possession, gifting the ball back to Brighton far too easily, and they've definitely had. The better of the last 15 minutes or so in terms of opportunities and attack in play. We're just try and slow the game down a little bit again. I don't want to rest on our laurels too much though. A one goal lead is never secure and not until the final whistle goes. So if we can grab a second in this game. Obviously that would be ideal. Nathan Patterson. Go inside Diaw. Can't quite find him. Lucky bounce back to Nathan Patterson though. Pass the ball. How many times did I press pass there? And Nathan Patterson's just continuing to dribble it. I pressed pass about three times. And Brighton come away on the counter now. If we concede from this, I'm going to be very, very annoyed. Cut out well by Danzo, though. And Asan Diaw is in behind. Is the goalkeeper going to come out and claim it? Just bounces into the penalty area, which allows him to do so. Straight out of play, though. That will give us an opportunity to make another change or two. As will Brighton. It's going to be Baldawi to come off for of Dahoud. Yet another of those 70-something Brighton midfielders. And it's going to be two more changes for Graham Potter and Everton as we enter the last 10 minutes here. Reese Nelson and Festi Ebersele to come on. Alan San Maximan, another good outing for him, comes off. As does James Justin. Just a fresh pair of legs on. At left back in the form of Festi Abasele. Anton Stack. Can he turn away from his man? Yes, he can. Big switch of play is on to Nathan Patterson. And he's managed to find him. Brighton back to defend now, though. Asan Diaw just about gets there. And that's a foul. We'll take that because we're going to be able to put the ball into the box. And we've got some very good targets to aim for. We are going to drop back into our defensive game plan for the last 10 minutes or so here as well. What, and that took away plays in the box for the free kick. But when I go into attack and it doesn't put them back in. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. 
I wish I... I wish I waited now. Uh, let's try and find one of those two guys at the back post there. I mean, that'll do. Kevin Danzo from range. Gets it on target. That's not bad. I didn't realise changing your game plan as a set piece is preparing to be taken would affect how many players are in the box. If not, I would have waited until after. So that's an opportunity kind of wasted, but I wasn't really to know. Corner kick this time, and we will put Gerard De Lafayou on it. That will allow Anton Stack and Scott McTominay to each be in the box alongside the likes of Kevin Danzo, who is there but can't challenge for the header. Well done by Festia Basele, though. Not sure how he managed to get anything on that. And he manages to find Scott McTominay. He can't find Anton Stack. The pass is such a poor one. The pass is such a poor one. Anton Stack was in acres of space. And McTominay couldn't find him. And we're in trouble now as Brighton break. A header towards goal, but it's a, a really tame one by Matoma. Jordan Pickford collects and we'll just slow the game right down here. Kevin Danzo. Besti Ebersele. Space to run and we know Ebersele, he likes to run. Slowed down far too much there though and allowed the Brighton man back in. What a challenge by Anton Stack. We'll take that. Maybe not. Eagle works it in field. Let's press high with Dale Lafayou. Nathan Patterson finally manages to stop Matoma in his tracks. I think that's the first time today he's managed to do that. Lobbed over. Scott McTominay worked back across goal. And Brighton equalised. Come on. Really poor. Really poor. I thought we defended that well enough. I think Jordan Pickford really is at fault there. More than I am. I thought we defended that well enough to force it wide to Yak and Murder. And let's see. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just protecting that far side of the goal with Ben Godfrey. What more can you do there? I'm protecting that far side of the goal, forcing him to go near post. Where I'm expecting Jordan Pickford to make the save. And he just simply doesn't. Ref! How is that not even a booking? Outrageous challenge. Reese Nelson beats his man. Get in the box. Get there. Unlucky. Tomine trying to win the header at the near post. Verbruggen collects. Ben Godfrey wins the header. Anton Stack finds Eber Saley. Finds Reese Nelson. Nathan Patterson. Put the ball in the box. Poor cross Patterson. There's Scott McTominay. No, it's Gerard De La Feu. He, De La Feu, and Stack all wear yellow boots. It's impossible to tell them apart. Well, one, Anton Stack. Come on, one more opportunity. In that gap. Ah, oh, man, there was space. There was space to work a shot. We just couldn't thread it through. And it's going to be a draw. Last minute equaliser for Brighton. Oh, that's so frustrating. We did do a good enough job in the second half of locking that game up. We should have been out of sight. And I think that opportunity right at the very end of the first half with Lewis Ferguson really is, is the difference in the game ultimately, isn't it? If I had a bit more composure, potentially we would have been 2-0 up at the break and the second half would have been a different affair. But instead, Brighton managed to find the equaliser late on really should have been a better performance in that second half we should have seen the game out better we should have grabbed a second goal at some point lots and lots of what ifs in that particular game this can still be a thoroughly positive episode though as we do have that premier league fixture against watford to get to as well as our home matchup against manchester united in the europa league manchester united probably one of the tougher opponents left in the competition at this stage and if we can knock them out in the round of 16 i think that's going to set us up really nicely 
for the quarterfinals and beyond. And although Asan Diaw absolutely terrorized Manchester United last time out, he doesn't find a place in the starting lineup today. Reese Nelson takes that from him. Cunha and Sam Maximan do start up front, though. Josh De Silva comes into the side. Maxim De Kuyper, Isak Torre both return. Noah and Bamba comes into the back five as well. So we went into this game simply needing to avoid conceding three goals or more. It looked initially as if we might struggle to do that. Bruno Fernandes getting in an early sight of goal. But we quickly settled into the game and started creating some opportunities of our own. The ball falling kindly to Alan Sam Maximan after a couple of deflections in the box but he maybe wasn't quite expecting it rushed his shot ended up going harmlessly wide Sam Maximan caused trouble all day long though Manchester United started Kieran Trippier at right back and that was just a death wish the pace and dribbling ability of Alan Sam Maximan absolutely tore him to shreds and it was Alan Sam Maximan that opened the scoring 35 minutes into the game this time with a less than trademark header from a Maxim to Kuiper free kick. So that meant all we had to do was avoid conceding four goals for the remainder of the game. And we managed to do exactly that. Jordan Pickford relied upon a couple of times to make some big saves in big spots. This one from Marcus Rashford. And he made another good save late on to Amaney finding the ball on the edge of the box. Laying it off to Anthony. But Jordan Pickford making a big stop at the near post. And we did manage to see the game out to a pretty comfortable 1-0 win, making it a 6-2 aggregate victory. Scores from the other fixtures in the round of 16. Villarreal lost 1-0 to Frankfurt, but do progress with a 3-2 aggregate victory nonetheless. Newcastle win 2-0 against Galatasaray. They go through with a 4-1 aggregate victory. Ajax progress over Union SG 3-2. Milan draw one all with Union Berlin, but a big performance in the first leg sees them through. Chelsea draw two all with Porto, but get knocked out after a 1-0 loss in the first leg. Real Sociedad advance over Braga, and RC Lens with a big comeback in the second leg to progress 3-2 over Rangers. So Newcastle still in the competition, Porto there, Villarreal a decent team as well, maybe Ajax would be a tough draw but there's a couple of fairly easy teams in there as well in Lens and Sociedad so it'll be really interesting to see who we've got in the next round and the quarterfinal draw is in and I have to say it's gone pretty much as well as we could have expected we are drawn against one of the easier teams that I mentioned in RC Lens not only that but Newcastle are paired up with Porto Milan are paired up with Villarreal so I would say the toughest opponents have been paired together and the easier opponents have been paired together, one of which we have managed to be drawn against. So that means two of the four best teams left in the competition are guaranteed to be knocked out in the quarterfinals. So we'll have those fixtures coming up later in the month, but we'll round out things here today with our final fixture of the episode against Watford. And after missing out on all three points in the earlier game against Brighton, it's going to be essential we come away with a win here today. Jordan Pickford starts in goal. Strongest back five that Graham Potter has come to rely on. McTominay alongside Stack in midfield. Dale Feu comes in up front in place of Matthias Cunha. And it looked like it was going to be an easy afternoon as Nathan Patterson crossed into the box. Alan Sam Maximan won the header. It was uh, quite a distance from goal, but the header looped back the way that it came. Goalkeeper was already all the way at his near post and it went in to make it 1-0 Everton. Nathan Patterson again was causing issues down the right-hand side and it looked as though we would double our lead just five minutes into the game. But Asan Diaw, of all people, failed to put the ball in the back of the net. It was only 12 minutes in that we managed to double our lead, though the referee playing a really good advantage as Jared De Lafay was completely wiped out. Anton Stack struck towards goal. Pollock, the Watford defender, got the block but only deflected it past his own goalkeeper to make it 2-0. Watford were lively though, and they were back in the game on about the half an hour mark. We struggled to take the ball away from them on the edge of the box, and the midfielder slipped it through for the striker, who just slotted the ball past an onrushing Jordan Pickford to make it 2-1. Gerard De La Fe re-established that two-goal lead barely minutes later though, a minute, minute and a half maybe. Goal against his old club, holding up his position on around the penalty spot, for Asan Diaw to pull it back. He made it 3-1. Alan Sam Maximan had another very good game. And into the second half, he looked like he might score again. But his shot was a poor one in the end. A really good position just to the right-hand side of the D. 
but couldn't wrap his foot around it. But Watford would not go down without a fight, though, and they did manage to get back on the score sheet again late in the game, well into the 85th, 86th minute, I think, when they fired it past Jordan Pickford for a second time to make it 3-2. But then Luca Waldschmidt secured the victory, scoring what undoubtedly is going to be goal of the season, potentially even goal of the series. What is that, 30 yards out when he ends up striking it? Absolutely venomous shot right into the top corner. Nothing any goalkeeper in the world could do about that one. So it's a really lively and end-to-end -end game back and forth as well. Certainly one for the neutral. There was a Jordan Pickford penalty save in there as well that you didn't see in those highlights. And that victory does take us up one place in the table to seventh position. Still five points behind Aston Villa in fifth but we do have a game in hand on them now so potentially we could be just two points away from europe so disappointing to concede that last minute equalizer against brighton but a very positive episode nonetheless four points in the premier league and of course we do advance to the quarterfinals of the europa league it'll be the same drill in the next two episodes two premier league games one european fixture as we take on chelsea at goodison park we're going to travel to craven cottage to take on fulham and I think this quarterfinal matchup away to RC Lens has to be the featured game in the next episode. So we will look forward to that in the next one. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.